Hello there guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea back here again for another edition of Let's Talk Chelsea. Hope you're doing well and keeping safe on this Sunday. Going to be talking about N'Golo Kante, will Chelsea sell the midfielder? Also, Chelsea search for a new goalkeeper and why Havertz hasn't been announced yet. But before we get into any of that, I want to ask you guys, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Also, hit that like button if you're enjoying the content because it helps out the channel as well. I want to start off today's episode with N'Golo Kante and this debate around him being potentially up for sale this summer by Chelsea. I spoke about N'Golo Kante and I've spoken about N'Golo Kante frequently. It's sort of the issue around his fitness. Will he be a long-term player for Frank Lampard? All of that stuff. I remember making a video on this very topic, I believe early lockdown, sort of when football had been suspended, April time I believe it was. And sort of discussing N'Golo Kante, his impact on the team, his fitness issues, given his age, could Chelsea cash in on him this summer to make funds for other players? This is also very naturally, I think, tied into Declan Rice potentially coming to the club soon and Chelsea's pursuit of Declan Rice. I want to talk about N'Golo Kante first um, because I think, as I stated in my rational perspective to the Brighton friendly yesterday, where N'Golo Kante played, I think looked very sharp for the time he was on the pitch, looked very healthy, which was good. I think selling N'Golo Kante would be a really stupid move. Um, I just cannot entertain those ideas anymore. I could entertain them a few months ago when Project Restart hadn't happened and we hadn't seen what Lampard's midfield was going to look like. The moment I started to see that Lampard was putting N'Golo Kante in that number six role at the base of the midfield, I think I sort of made my mind up and I sort of saw that and thought, okay, Frank Lampard very much wants N'Golo Kante as a key player in his midfield. I think he's constructing that midfield. I think the midfield we saw at the start of Project Restart, not of course when N'Golo Kante got re-injured again and he had to revert times to a 3-4-3 and accommodate Jorginho in that role as well. I think that's what Frank Lampard potentially wants in the future. I mean, that's not concrete. And I think that's very much determined on N'Golo Kante's fitness long term, which is a massive concern. It is. If he has a similar season, especially with it being so congested, gets injuries again and again and again, then, yeah, you have to sort of consider, will he be a long term player for us? But I think selling a player of that quality, unique quality in midfield, even if he hasn't strictly played the DM role, the, the, the lone DM role in his career, I still think is a major player for us. I think what he offers for Frank Lampard, you know, the interceptions, the the dynamic movement of N'Golo Kante, being able to move so quickly across the pitch, I think is so important for Frank Lampard. And I think covering potentially two number eights in front of him, like Mason Mount and Kai Havertz, I think is a big thing for Lampard and, and to potentially to protect us against transitions. This is maybe going to be a challenging season for N'Golo Kante, adapting to being that lone DM. But when I saw him at the start of Project Restart, when he was playing there, he looked pretty good to me when he was playing there before he got injured. I think the big thing is thinking about that age, thinking about that price tag, what Chelsea could get for a player of that uh, quality. But to me, he's world-class. He's the only world-class player in the squad, or at least maybe that's going to change, of course, this season with Timo Werner, Hakim Ziyech, uh, Kai Havertz coming into the team. You know, if Thiago Silva has a big year. Of course, maybe that will change, but I still think N'Golo Kante is absolutely class. I know that's a very simplistic take, but... I've watched N'Golo Kante play for Chelsea. He's a transformative player at his best. Um, even in short spells last season, which was a very frustrating season for him fitness-wise, he still can show what he can do for Chelsea. I believe when N'Golo Kante is on the pitch, he's one of those players that you always believe there's a chance Chelsea can win big games when he's fit and ready to go. Because he can change games, he can win that midfield battle, he can help us in attack as well. And I think Frank Lampard sees that and still wants him to be a big player. I think these rumours and talks of him being up for sale, I think will get quickly shot down. I haven't heard anything from Frank Lampard yet. I hope he will question him about it because then when I think they will, I think they'll get a pretty clear answer, which is he's not for sale. Um, because I don't think he should be. I don't think Chelsea should be entertaining that. I think the big thing about Declan Rice, whether Declan Rice comes to Chelsea this summer, it's trying to find someone who can rotate with N'Golo Kante this season because of injury concerns, overplaying him. Also, just naturally rotation, who can fit that role? Ethan Ampadu, I think, is for me the first name that comes to mind in, in that role, potentially. I got a question about Andreas Christensen potentially going into that role in the future. I think that's more of a hypothetical dream one that you do on FIFA rather than actually realistic. I, I can't see Frank Lampard doing that. I think Christensen will likely still remain a, a centre-back if he remains at the club for the long term. But that's the challenge for Frank Lampard, finding someone. If he wants to play a 4-3-3, three, three, for instance, yesterday it looked like a 4-2-3-1, but it was the first preseason friendly. That's going to be a question mark 
For me, selling N'Golo Kante, I think we're still in a phase with Chelsea and Lampard. We're still in that moulding phase. We're still in that transition phase where you're going from sort of old Chelsea team to new Chelsea team. Players like Willian and Pedro leaving and new players coming in. It's still gelling. It's still forming. We're not quite in a stable position yet for me where you can go, okay, this is the clear starting eleven. Maybe N'Golo Kante is or isn't part of that. He has to be part of that for me um, because of the quality of the player. Then maybe you could, you know, look to sell him on later if there was a player who could replace him and do better in the role in the long term. But I think he's just foolish. I really do. I, I think that there's at least one or two good years left in his player year. And as I say, transformative player. Declan Rice, I think, still in my opinion, is a little bit too far this summer. I just think based on what West Ham want for him, I think it's going to be too much to for, for Chelsea to outlay on a player when they've spent so much already, over 200 million on players. And although it's been really good business by Chelsea, I don't think it's the end of the world if we don't get Declan Rice. I'd like to see Ethan Ampadu get minutes there as well. And I think that Thiago Silva coming in is a big addition I probably and maybe be proven wrong Chelsea summer has been ridiculous as we know but um I just think selling in Golo Kante is a big mistake Declan Rice I think Chelsea can wait on especially if they want to play him in centre back it would be a good player to bring in specifically for that position but I think Kante can do a great job in that role for me and I don't think we should be selling him please let me know your opinions on N'Golo Kante his future in the comments below next some quick news stories about Chelsea other transfer targets Chelsea looking for a new goalkeeper and it seems like Edward Mendy, the Ren goalkeeper, is Chelsea's big target in this position. And Nizar Kinsella tweeting last night, Chelsea have made a second offer for Ren goalkeeper Edward Mendy. This was also followed up by Jacob Steinberg in The Guardian. Chelsea set to increase offer for Ren goalkeeper Edward Mendy. Chelsea hope to persuade Ren to sell Edward Mendy despite having their first offer of 60 million euros, 14.2 million pounds for the goalkeeper rejected. I got to be honest, I didn't know a lot about Edward Mendy uh, when we were linked to him. Um, expected Chelsea here in a, a great account I always shout out on this channel for stats regarding Chelsea and he looked into Edouard Mendy's advanced metrics which seems to be highly encouraging as you can see by the tweet on the screen now in terms of skill set and numbers he seems to be capable of becoming a starting level goalkeeper for Chelsea at least as a stopgap however like with most signings from smaller clubs there are questions over his adaptation I think height as well was a big thing for Mendy that looked like a positive compared to Kepa Presence and dominance in that area is a big thing for Chelsea, really dominating that area. I think it's very similar to me, the problems we had in a centre-back and what we needed from a centre-back, which hopefully Thiago Silva will bring this season, is very similar to what we need from a goalkeeper. Yes, very, you know, two distinct uh, positions, of course. But at the same time, I think that just sort of that maturity, that danger awareness, which Kepa just does not have and Caballero doesn't have as well, I don't think to a, to a good enough level for Chelsea week in, week out consistently. Um, and, and you're sort of looking at what Chelsea can go in for there and try and get to improve that area and what can really improve the defence as a cohesive unit next season. Um, I think for me, this deal... Feels very similar to Thiago Silva. Of course, it's not a free transfer. I just mean in the sense of being a little bit pragmatic based on the money we've already spent on players and just looking at what's there in the market for Chelsea. Everyone brings up Yano Black, but I just think it's a step too far for Chelsea this summer. Maybe in a year's time, we could revisit that situation um, and then Yano Black could become the massive transfer of next season if, if that's something Chelsea would be willing and, and able to do next season. Maybe if we need to revisit the situation again, because it's something Chelsea need to address right now um, I think it's a little bit simplistic to say just throw anyone in that goal and, and it's going to improve things because I think Chelsea are very scared of spending a lot of money on a goalkeeper like they did for Kepa and the same thing happens again you bring in a big goalkeeper for a lot of money maybe an inexperienced goalkeeper you fork out a lot of money for him and he fails again and Chelsea are sat with the same situation with Kepa it looks like Kepa may not even be sold this summer or even loaned, I think, is the big thing for Chelsea. And maybe they're waiting, of course, to see if they can get a goalkeeper in before addressing that situation and trying to find a loan for Kepa. But it's going to be difficult even for a loan based on his wages, which Chelsea are going to have to cover a lot of them as well. Um, I think this would be... Maybe a decent signing. As I say, in terms of you know height, I think and dominance is a big thing for me. Maturity. I did talk about Pet Check and apparently Chelsea having two distinct lists for goalkeepers. We've talked about a variety of options. Andre Onana, of course, Yano Black has been that, on that list as well. Nick Pope, other goalkeepers as well. Dean Henderson, of course, has recently signed a new contract at Man United. Um, I think that there's there just needs to be a sense of pragmatism from Chelsea and opportunity this summer, maybe thinking that you're not always going to get your first choice target. And maybe this is one area where 
a stopgap could work. You know, Chelsea don't have to pay a lot of money for Mendy potentially. You bring him in, it could turn out to be a wise bit of business, even as expected. Chelsea put, put quite well a stopgap, sort of maybe for a year or two, and then we get maybe a first choice, longer term option for Chelsea that is a higher fee. As I say, I think Yano Black is a little bit too far this summer. And lastly, Kai Havertz. Um, I really tr try and avoid talking about Kai Havertz now because. I think we're we're at the stage where massive news has come through. You know, we know Chelsea are basically have done this deal now. It was well, at least ninety nine point nine percent certain now. Kai Havertz will be a Chelsea player this season. Um, it's going to happen. It's just a case of the delay, the final things. Uh, by Leverkusen getting a replacement in for Kai Havertz. Potentially Chelsea themselves, from certain reporters like Fabrizio Romano, just waiting for the right time to announce it. Um, I think there could be a patience thing there for Chelsea because this is going to be a massive announcement. Nazar Kinsella in his article that I suggest you. Go and read that I'll link in the description box below. We're talking about the domino effect of Chelsea signing Kai Havertz from Leverkusen, Leverkusen buying a replacement, Schick from Roma, and Jeremy Boga from Sassuolo. Of course, Jeremy Boga linked to Chelsea, potentially a buyback this summer. And that feels a long time ago. We were discussing Jeremy Boga as a potential wide player for Chelsea this summer. And also, deals take time. Fabrizio Romano talked about this, you know, in terms of referencing De Litt last summer, how long it took for a 100 million euro deal to go through. It's a matter of time. It really is now. I think people having a go at Fabrizio Romano. I've seen a lot of people tweeting him uh, continuously asking him when it's done you know he's continuously said it's up to Chelsea press officers uh, not to me now he said the deal is done stop harassing Fabrizio Romano please he's done a lot of great work and I think the people I trust on transfers are still saying pretty adamantly the deal is imminent it's going to go through it's just a matter of really finishing it up now and Kai Havertz will be a Chelsea player in the next week I'm pretty sure and when we get that announcement it's going to be brilliant um, it's not going to dampen it down anyway it's still going to be a massive day for Chelsea when Kai Havertz officially becomes a Chelsea player so just wait for it I'll cover it on the channel but that is it for this edition of Let's Talk Chelsea thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch it if you did enjoy it hit that subscribe button and an notification bell so you never miss an upload. Follow me on Twitter at Son of Chelsea. Have a great day and I'll see you again.